Hi all there, it's Santo Kines here, connected with St. Teresa Parish in Edmonton. And today I'm speaking with you about the gift of piety. But before starting, just let's put ourselves in prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this occasion, especially in this troubled time to stay in your presence, to enjoy your presence and to learn more about you and especially about you Holy Spirit and we pray also to you Holy Spirit you that are so free that you are blowing where you want we hear you but we don't know where you are coming from and where you are going please give us also this freedom Help us to not be so attached to our thing, to our plans, but to follow you, to be free like you. Especially in this time that is coming, where we are preparing for Pentecost, where we remember that your power change the world, change, give birth to the church and really blow up like a powerful wind everywhere. Come, Holy Spirit, and lead us, make us free. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. So, talking about the gift of piety, which is a quite difficult topic, <laughs> also, biblically speaking, because if you go to the Bible, in the only place, you know, in the Bible, okay, let's see here. In the Bible, there is only one place where you will find uh, all the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's in the book of the prophet Isaiah, and that everybody knows, know, where he's talking about the Messiah, Jesus that is coming. And we know that is the shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his root, the branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of mighty, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Da 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 da, first surprise. <laughs> you there, you see only six gifts. And the fear of the Lord is mentioned twice, but there is still six gifts. There is no piety. So, where is the trick? Actually, there is no trick. Look here in the original Hebrew. Of course, even if you don't understand. So, you see here, the one that we translate in English with fear of the Lord. Here, Irach, you know, Irach again. So it seems eh, there is not the seven gift, but only six. But actually, you need to understand what the Hebrew were saying with this word Irach. And actually, it's close to the verb see, seeing. And you may say, what see is, is what's your relation have to with fear? But actually, it's, it's beautiful. When you see the creation, when you see the majesty of God, when you see how you are, He has made things so beautifully, and they are working so well, how everything is so majestic, really put us in awe, a reverence. This is the first step. But after that, they call us to duty. Yeah. We feel the duty to follow the commandments, the law of this awesome God, to find His will and to follow. So, you know, uh, actually, so is there in Hebrew both the meaning, the awe, the reverence, but also the piety that call us to, to follow His law, to follow his will. So let's go back in that text and let's understand so what's happened along the century. So even if nowadays we have a, this translation in English, uh, so we we see in Greek that there the are two different words appear here. 
And you know, the translation in Greek started 100 years before the coming of Christ. And unfortunately, in Greek, there is no one word that can express that kind of irach. So it's seeing the glory of God so majestic and bring little by little you in know, in reverence and call you to duty, to follow the Lord. So they try to express it with two different words. So one is this phobon that even if you don't know Greek, you may understand because we have also in English phobia, phobia, which, you know, is a little bad in the sense that it's a little like terror, horror of something. And here is for this fear of the Lord, let's say, while this Eun Sebeas, Eu is a good, the well, the well reverence that that I give to God following his co so commandment. This become in um, in Latin, as you may see here, pietatis, and the other one is timoris, which is fear. So here where we have uh, the piety. So you may say, oh, but so it's a kind of trick. No, no, it's not a trick. So indeed, there are seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you can feel that they are close, but actually there are, they are seven. So let's now understand a little more about the gift of, of piety. And actually, if you have still doubts about this gift of piety, that maybe people in the church invented with the century, you may be convinced by the fact that if you go even online to see, like here, okay, let's see this one. I just browse one. Yeah, if you just go online to see which passage are related with piety, especially the New Testament, there is a lot, a lot, where piety is called to serve God, like to have a duty toward God and his commandment, but also a duty toward our country, praying for our governor, but also to, toward your teacher, your parents, a kind of be loyal to them, faithful to them. So it's not just a, an invention, let's say, oh, sorry. So it's not just an invention of the church, so it's in the Bible too. Piety from Latin pietat, pietas, pius, is first of all is not pity. You know, the language are evolving. So sometimes in English, uh, in nowadays, it sounds like when we're talking about piety, it, it sounds like to have a pity on people on their situation. is not, is not that. So let's go back uh, to the original meaning of pietas that was in Latin. Pietas translated variously as duty, religiosity, or religious behavior, loyalty, a devotion, a filial piety, and so on, so on, so on, so on. Um, if you have read the same thing from time of the Roman Empire, you see actually that was very clear what this pietas piety was it was, it was really this loyalty this devotion let's say to your country uh, even to at the point to sacrifice yourself uh, the faithfulness yeah for your country for the best of your country and also for the divinity so it's not uh, not at all nothing to do with the pity now let's go to see what the church is saying at this regard about the gift of piety and you so saw there is many people who have spoken about that we have we have uh, san gregory which is a pope of more than 1000 years ago he was saying through fear of the lord we rise to piety the basic definition is to give filial worship to God precisely as our father and to relate with all people as children of the same father. Here a person shows reverence for God as a loving father 
and respect others as children of God, precisely because that is what we are all are. And here we have a little the key. It's all about this faithfulness, faithfulness in relationship, faithfulness in one's relationship with parents, with country, with God. So this is the little intro. So, but to understand now a little more in detail, so I'm called to do the. <laughs> to obey the law of the Lord, to follow his will, but also to love my country and follow the love of my country, even if sometimes I don't like those politicians that are governing my, my country. And for that, many times even in the New Testament, there is invitation, okay, pray, pray. Pray for those who are leading you, for your king, for your queen, for your governors. So the same, the gift of piety brings us to this, a call to duty to serve the Lord, to serve the country, but also to be loyal, respectful to your parents, to your teacher. Mm. Here the difficulties start, no? Because in nowadays we are not talking very much about this kind of thing, you know? And everybody sometimes is doing whatever he thinks, whatever he wants, like there is no law at all. And instead here it's like pushing us, we have a duty toward God, toward our country, our family, our teachers. Um, and somehow to be submitted to their will. So at this regard uh, to be submitted, which is very hard topic nowadays. Anyway, you, you can see here, because I, I did just a special talk on this submission. Yeah, which is another hard one. So that will help us to understand a little more, but I will, I will try to summarize here just to let you understand. For example, there is a passage in the book of Jeremiah where God is saying to Jeremiah, you know, build up a yoke. You know, the yoke is the one that you are putting upon a cow to work the land, to move stuff. So God said to Jeremiah, build up a yoke with bars, strip, and put on your neck and go round saying to people, you know, guys, if you don't submit to Babylon, you will die. Oops. So your first reaction is, oh, our God is not uh, the King of Kings, the one who deliver our Savior. Why is saying us to be submitted to Babylon, to follow Babylon? You know the story there, no? Babylon was conquering uh, Jerusalem, was deporting people there in Babylon. And... And God starts to keep on saying to Jeremiah, I go around to say to people, especially to those false prophets, that they're saying, no, no, God will come and deliver us. They say, no, you are false prophet. God will not come and will not deliver you. So if you don't put your neck under this yoke, you will die. But if you put under this yoke, you, you will stay alive. <laughs> so th th this is interesting. So you say, how... God invited us to be submitted to Babylon. Of course, we need to enter in the contest there. You see how many times the people of Israel uh, rarely abandoned God. Uh, they were unfaithful. So God was trying all way to bring his people back. So you may say, even through sorrow? Oops. And when we talk about this, people already jump up. So they say, oh, why? When the, something bad happens, it's because God is doing? No, for sure. God is good. God is merciful. How can be that? When some disgrace, something happened. I'm not saying that, because often it's the evil one who is bringing bad thing in our life. But to the point that the, why the Lord is allowing that. Like the Lord is allowing Babylon to conquer Jerusalem, deporting people. 
and actually God himself is saying you need to put your neck under this yoga Babylon oh wow and that is the point but maybe I make another example to let you understand this another famous one you know the story of Joseph this poor guy that was sold out by his brothers as a slave and finished slave in Egypt and again you may say why God allowed something like that because we don't see what is beyond but God will see everything you know sometimes allowed even let's say evil thing bad thing that the evil one is doing okay because we know that everything in his hands in fact we know the end of the story of Joseph he became the second in Egypt and when was the famine in, in, uh, in Israel, they come in Egypt and they receive food, they were welcomed, and you know the story. So you see something that we were starting so bad, that we say, no, no, God is merciful, God is so good, we cannot allow the thing like that. But at the very end, God is nowhere is going. So he allowed. That when we are talking about the gift of piety of course we are talking about the gift so when we are full of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit give us this wisdom and also this ability to feel the call to duty and serve the Lord be submitted to his will and as many part in the New Testament to be submitted even to our governors even our states and countries that sometimes they seem like the country of crazy people indeed they are but God say yes obey your governors and pray for them if they are so bad so that is the point but try to go over this for those who have this gift mean that they understand they very understand that everything is in the hands of the Lord so at the very end I completely trust in this father that he's taking care of me. Even if I've been sold a slave in Egypt, I trust there is a plan, there is something. Even if my country is led by strange people, really against God, maybe God is allowing things like this to, uh, to let us Christian react to move, you know, or to let us reflect, you know like this COVID-19 people are saying oh God is doing this no somebody say no it's the evil one God may save us I don't know what is but the same for one who trusts in God say I God I trust in you I know that everything is in your hands so at the very end you will use for good and in fact in those who believe you remember St. Paul he wrote so beautifully in the letter to the Romans uh, at the chapter 8 verse 28 where he say all things all things work for good for those who love god so for those for those people who are in relation with god we trust and love in him and they have this gift of piety i will follow him i trust in you whatever will happen because i know that everything is in hands everything is in hands and everything will work for my good and for the good of the people who love him. And this is hard for the people nowadays to understand because everybody won't organize his future, is won't fix everything. And here there is a call somehow to the submission. Submission to the God plan, God will. So let's do a conclusion about this gift of piety where we have say means in simple word this loyalty this faithfulness this feeling of having a duty to serve the lord to know his will for example how many of us have a relationship with god like we were saying at the beginning you know the Pope Gregory his relationship with, with God as a father as Jesus was saying the Abba father so the daddy how many of us every day say okay daddy what do we do today what is your will today not instead we are planning everything do everything 
<clears throat> it's not supposed to be the opposite just ask our creator okay daddy what is your plan for me what is your will because i won't do that but of course we need to receive this gift that coming from the holy spirit that let's see how great is our god that our god is our daddy he want to hear i want to understand your will on me and i want to follow you no matter what's happening in my country no matter what's happening in my body <laughs> No matter what's happening in my family, my parents, especially with the teenagers, sometimes we are, oh, I'm against my parents, they don't understand anything, they are so old, you know. Accept even that. Accept even that. You don't know what that can bring to you. More wisdom, more passion. You can learn important things they will use in the future. So don't judge. But if you have God in your heart, you know that everything is in a sense, you know that if it's allowed something, there is a reason. If you are not comfortable with that, of course, you can keep on praying. Oh, Lord, put away this kind of thing. Oh, Lord, help me in this. Help me to overcome this. Oh, if it's not your will, or oh, changing. Like Jesus said to the Father, Father, if it's not your will, can you put away the cross for me? But if it's your will, I will take it. So if something you don't like, of course you can keep on praying. And the Lord may change history, may change your life. Yes. But if, if it's your will, Lord, I will accept too. Of course, it's something that is coming from high. It's a gift from the Holy Spirit. But this is the one that we want to ask today to you, o Lord. So let's finish with the prayer again. And yes, O oh Lord, this we ask that you help us to be free indeed, to be free indeed, that you may work in us. It may open our eyes to see how beautiful you are, how rarely are a daddy, a father who is caring for us. And for that, we trust in you, we believe in you, we belong to you, so we are willing to follow your will and to embrace everything that you put around us, in our country, in our family, in our school. Yeah, we'll be loyal, faithful. Yeah, we'll pray for all of them. Give me this grace in this time of Pentecost that is coming. Give me this grace and make, new, and make me a new press. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as conclusion, I was ask to put some questions so yeah you can stop to this question that may help you in this time of prayer of reflection so thank you for your attention and uh, see you soon okay bye